Today's episode is brought to you by the Back Mountain Chamber. The Back Mountain Chamber is a membership-driven, nonprofit organization with a goal of promoting commerce, community, and culture in the region. Its work is made possible through community sponsors and partners, the efforts of incredible volunteers, and the support of the businesses it serves. The Back Mountain Chamber's latest collaboration with three other local chambers is Luzerne County Local. This initiative was developed to highlight the importance of choosing local businesses for everything from shopping to professional services. You can find more details and deals from businesses all across Luzerne County at luzernecountylocal.org. If you'd like to learn more about the Back Mountain Chamber, please visit backmountainchamber.org or follow them on social media. Hi, I'm Bill Corcoran Jr. and I'm your host for the On The Stacks podcast. Today, I'm chatting with Nicole Farber, CEO of NX2. What's up, podcast episode 43. Welcome to the On The Stacks podcast, Nicole. Mm, Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, all the way from the the dirt road in Center (laughs) Moreland. Yes. You're here. (laughs) I'm here. Yeah, so... (laughs) Um, that was a little inside joke, but, uh, yes. Nicole and I were chatting right before we started. <laughs> she was telling me a little bit about her background and her history and kind of where she came from. So I think it would be a good point to kind of just start there. Like, you know, tell me about your background. You're from the area. Um, yes. where, where did it, where did it all begin? Okay. So, um, it all began in this little tiny town. <laughs> I don't even know if it's considered a town, but center Moreland and like you had said, it's a dirt road. It's out in the country. It wasn't a lot of people uh, around. And, you know, I was the kid that had to do the 45 minute bus ride <laughs> to oh. school and was always envious of all the other kids who lived a half a mile away from me going to the school district, you know, five miles down the road. So it all started out there. I was actually born to two teenage parents. They married at 15. Uh, they were very young and they had um, all three of us kids by 19. So needless to say, I grew up um, in a very different type of atmosphere, I'd say, that others have done, have grown up in. And um, were, you the, were you the oldest out of the three? The youngest. Oh, the youngest. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Um, my father worked so hard all the time. My mother, uh, she actually had ended up going back for her GED and everything from, you know, what had gone on. I feel like I'm not doing this right. No, I, you we, are. I don't know if we're star- starting nope. at the right place. Maybe, no, this is, this is maybe, perfect. Maybe I was going to say, maybe ask me about my stuff, the good stuff right now, and then I could go back but to no, it. No, it's perfect. Keep going. <laughs> no, that is the good stuff. Um, I had the most loving parents. I do have the most loving parents in the world, and they were just very young. Mm-hmm. So you, I look at my son right now, and I think, oh, my goodness, my parents were younger than that when they had us. So there was definitely some obstacles going through life. You know, coming up, I had a sister and a brother. Um, my sister passed away when I was very young. At I was just turning 12, and she ended up committing suicide. So going through that, on top of a lot of the other challenges as a young child, wow. <laughs> um, there, like I said, there was many obstacles, many challenges that I faced in going through it. But I truly believe that it's like everything that we go through, you know, kind of catapults us into what we become mm-hmm. when we're older. So I started out as very humble beginnings. You know, I've watched my parents go through so many things as I was younger growing up, watching how hard they worked, sometimes three jobs um, at all times, not getting a lot of time with both of them how I wanted because my mother worked as well. They both did. And, um, And then with the challenges with my sister of going through all that, needless to say, it was, it was, um, it was difficult, you know, in many different instances. So, and on top of that, I didn't know what I wanted to do ever. (laughs) You know, I was like, I guess I want to say that I was maneuvering through all the things going on. And I really wasn't like thinking about stuff like that. I was trying to like kind of survive myself growing up, maybe when other ones were trying to figure out what they were going to do as career or going to college. College was never mentioned in my house. That was not, you know, a possibility or anything like that. So, we were raised to make sure that we worked hard, be kind to others, you know, just all the really good the stuff. basics, the good stuff. Yeah. The basics and the good stuff. And so I watched both my parents. I listened to my 
uh, listen to every I, I pretty much hung on every word that they had to say. My mother was very faith filled. And my father, he, like I said, just worked. His work ethic was incredible. And to this day, I have both of them, you know, like yeah. a, a great mix with them. And it it took me quite some time to get here, though, to the part that I appreciate <laughs> my parents <laughs> and everything that they've done and everything they've gone through. And I don't think I was really able to appreciate it as much until I had my son and then going through it as a parent with him. Um, which brings me forward going through all this, uh, through after high school, I, you know, went straight to work and I work with the mentally challenged individuals. I loved it. I knew in my heart, I wanted to help people. I just didn't know how or what to do. And of course, not having any college background or anything like I just went straight into it and found that I did at least love to work. (laughs) I would work all the time. Like, I'm telling you that I, at a very young age, I found out real quick how it was to work 70 hours a week. And I didn't mind it because I was driven. And I knew that there was all these different qualities, you know, that I that I had within me, but I just didn't know where to put them yet. Okay. You know, so yeah. I Sorry. ended up I ended up going to um only because somebody actually put me down at this one point in my life that it it pretty much propelled me into going to trying to do like um what do you what do you mean by put you down that like said that i would never amount to be anything okay you know, so it was a like, negative comment that somebody oh yes 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 and so i'm sure most people will see that that um if you take negativity and you turn around to positivity, it'll take you a lot further quick and quicker than you would have went on your first, but you just got to recognize it, you know? And so going with that and saying, you know, pretty much taking it gone and I used it to benefit myself, to move forward with it. And, you know, it was kind of like one of those things that, you know, somebody tells you you can't go that far or whatever, go so far that they can't see anymore. I actually just told my son that the other day um, of another because something had happened. But I always because of all the different negativity and the different things that I have gone through, I think that it has helped me so much, especially with business and everything that I'm doing right now. And it got me to where I am. And it's helped me incredibly. You know, I know that sounds really weird. No, not at all. (laughs) Me saying that all the heartaches and struggles and everything have, you know, helped, but they truly have. Like, it was just kind of like hindsight, you know? Yeah. And and so the more that I'm getting it, seeing all these different things where I used to be upset at the life that I was kind of like the cards that I was given much younger, and it ended up being the best things that ever happened to me. Truly, but I didn't recognize it until I started, you know, I was getting older and getting out into everything. And then I realized what my parents had truly done for us and what they had gone through. And so after that, I wanted so bad to make them proud, obviously, for many different reasons. And I would dabble into all these different things, not knowing what I was going to do and always feeling like I was a letdown because I didn't do anything and just kind of being like that person who had, you know, who was the statistics of like, you know, I was going to end up here, do this or do that. You know, many people that are born in trailer parks to teenage kids don't really have the best outcome normally. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. So for me, even sitting here in your offices and doing for your podcast and everything and you asking me to come on, I I just have to say I'm so grateful and I really am honored. Like, this is really awesome for me. Yeah. And so um, you're going to have to keep me on track. The one thing I want to tell you right now is that I could go out in the desert and it takes me a while to get back in unless you pull me in. All right, so. don't worry. I got water here to reel you right back <laughs> <Yeah>. in. <laughs> yes. That was a cheesy joke. Cheesy desert joke. I get it. Yeah. I got it. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so, so you know, you know, what, what were your, you know, some of the jobs that you did? I know you worked, you worked at Candy's Place. Do you want to maybe talk yes. about Candy's Place and your experience there? Yes, um, I'll do that. So that was after my first job was actually a step-by-step that I was telling you with um, the... Uh, Mentally challenged. mentally mm-hmm. challenged individuals. And then from there, and then I was only 23 years old and I got pregnant with my son. <laughs> Is that when you were, <laughs> you were at have, step by step? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. And so, um, and 
I didn't know it at the time, but obviously it's the best thing that ever happened to me. But I wasn't married. I was this young girl who was just getting by, doing what I had to in this little apartment and just, you know, getting through life, like just trying to like how we all do. We think about our stuff and just do the best we can and pretty much paycheck to paycheck and scared out of my mind when I found out that I was pregnant. And so I was like, what am I going to do with my life? What is going to go on? You know, like all these different things. And I was just like, and now the responsibility was all on me because it was just me and my son when I had him. And I went through some very difficult things that I had um, gone through because of the stage that I was in and the life part that I was at and everything. And it was, I would say the first a year or so of my son's life was very difficult on me of just going through things and the changes and being alone and doing all the different things. So at that time, I pretty much told myself, I'm going to change my whole life around. I am going to make something for me and my son. I am going to maybe take all the negative things that I've ever been told or anything that people had put me down or tried, you know, like putting my light under a bushel (laughs) pretty much. And I was determined to shine. I was determined to do something for my son and I, I had to, like there was, there was no other choice, you know? And so I literally just started even more so taking, um, doing all these things online. I was like, I was pretty much, I self-taught, I was self-taught computers and stuff. And I started like, cause I was starting to get into it got money and got my first computer. What year was this? 2000. Well, my son was born in 2003. Okay. So I would say 2003, 2004, 2004. Is this when when you were at Candy's or this is right before Before. you started? Okay. Yeah. I I started at Candy's 2008. So my son was like four or five years old, I think. Okay. So I was doing. You started kind of like teaching yourself online. Oh, yes. A lot. And as much as I could, like when other people were out partying and doing all these other things I had, I was a young mom at home working full time, plus like overtime and then trying to do things at night, like, you know, studying up and doing all these different things on my own to do it because I couldn't afford anything yet. You know, so what what did you teach yourself? Um, everything I had actually first started like videos and everything, you know, like, and doing things like that. And then I started teaching myself to build websites. So I did all that. And then when I started to get better and better at it, I was like, okay, I think I could, you know, I think I could actually probably charge someone for this, <laughs> you know, cause I was spending so much time in and I was so tired all the time. Uh, I remember barely sleeping at all and crying at night because everything was so hard all the time. And I had um, I was doing this. And I remember because when my son and I I got us our first apartment, it was very tiny and it was, you know, very it was much older (laughs) of an apartment. And it was I always say it was like the size of a matchbox. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or, you know, yeah. the matches, mm-hmm. the little boxes yep. or a shoe box, I say. But I was determined. And every time I looked around and I did things, I'm like, someday I am going to have a bigger house or someday I'm going to do this. And, you know, my mother always taught me never wait on anybody else. Do it for yourself. Do as be as independent as you possibly can. You know, all these different things. So it was like I felt like it was all like flooding me, you know, like as I kept getting older and older and even though I was only in my 20s with a kid once you get it I think once you have a child you get like (laughs) old like that but I was determined to do all this and I did and I just kept working and working and I was and I remember sitting at the table at different times you know and being like how am I gonna afford you know my car payment or how am I gonna afford this and that and thank god I had my parents to help me at the time with different things but The website really helped me because it gave me the ability and the opportunity to get side jobs on, but still be doing it at home with my son. Because it's very difficult when you don't have, you know, my parents moved away to to Florida and it was just us. And so I was also taking care of my grandmother at the time. She was elderly. She was like my girl. My My mammy was my girl. And so after this, I know I'm going to jump and it's going to be a little bit. That's but okay. I, when I was at the apartment, I went to, I got the job at Candy's place. 
And I loved it, obviously, because I was doing, you know, helping people doing what I absolutely love to do. I, you know, I helped incorporate a lot of new things into Candy's place, a lot of the healing arts and, you know, massage therapies and a lot of the alternatives, which I am really all about, too. And I was able to do all these great things and meet these amazing, wonderful people. And I loved them all. And I loved what I did. Oh, my God, I loved it so much. But it was very draining. I felt like I was like burden bearing, like because I would take home all these problems all the time. And I would because I care so much and it would kill like it would hurt so bad to be like doing, you know, this type of work. And then I couldn't do something more for them. But I was able to talk and encourage. And so you would think, well, why would you leave that? right? Why would you leave a job that you absolutely loved? Because every time I tell my story, I say I absolutely loved it. And I did. But the one thing that I knew is that I loved my son more. And the only way that I would be able to make a life for him that he truly, truly deserved and how I needed to was to do something different, you know, because I wanted a different outcome and I was doing all the kind of things the same. And I'm like, I was like, so I'm a big dreamer and a big thinker. And I could, you know, like just I mean, give me 20 minutes after this show and we could probably come up with a brand new company. And I, you know what I mean? Because my ideas are just like and I get that from my father, which I notice more and more. But going back to it, I was like, I, I just knew that there was something, something in me. And I knew it since I was like so young that there was something more and something better and something bigger. I just, I couldn't see it. And like, who would be able to see it in the position that, you know, where I was at and stuff. And, and so, but every move that I made, I did it with my whole heart, no matter what I did, you know, and I knew no matter what I started getting this feeling when I was at Candy's place after like five years or so that I was not in the right spot. <laughs> And I know that that sounds a little bit odd considering that I loved it and how could somebody be in the love, but it was like this still small feeling and inside of me. And I'm like, no, you're meant for more. There's something bigger out there. There's something more that you have to do and something that would be. And so I just kind of went off of that. And I just, I knew that I had to take a leap of faith or I was going to be stuck there. And I was more afraid to miss the opportunity of me leaving than I was of staying and having a comfortable job. I always tell people when you get to that point, when you're actually more afraid of leaving or I'm sorry, more afraid of staying in a position than you are of leaving, that's when you know it's time, you know, and you just got to jump. And I jumped and I fell on my face. <laughs> <laughs> so what so what did you do i did i fell right on my face like i don't know if at the time you've ever um heard of like the tough mutters and yeah. the dirty mm -hmm. girls and everything yep, so I'm back familiar. in 2013 like, this girl <laughs> thought, thought she was you were gonna, gonna be a like, tough mutter oh gosh yeah no not even a tough mutter because i can't run long distances or mm -hmm. anything but I wanted to be the director of the Tough Mudder, you know, like, cause I, I knew my, like, I love to be around people. I loved leading people. And I knew that I could inspire people like that to start doing something, you know, like I, I know that I have this like gift in me mm -hmm. now more so that I'm older. I could tell, I just never knew what it was before. But, um, so I, I put in my resignation after so long. Everybody was so hurt. I mean, literally it hit the, it was on the front page of the newspaper when I was leaving because I was truly blessed with the job and I met so many good people and I had, you know, like everything was so good. So me leaving, it was kind of like, what is going on here? Yeah. You know, but I knew I hit my glass, I, I hit the glass ceiling and I couldn't go any further, you know, and I knew, and sometimes you just know that, you know. And I knew that it was time. And so I did it. I decided I'm like, OK, I did this in March. I left in March, the beginning of March. And from March until July, I had to plan this entire event and think that the whole Northeast Pennsylvania crowd was going to show up to it. <laughs> that did not happen. <laughs> you know, I was like thinking like, OK, 
a thousand to five thousand people are going to show up because my I really do. I have such a granny. Like my, you know, my dreams are so big, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what? So what happened? Oh God. So I did this. Like a hundred volunteers came out with me, literally to help me do this. And I had hired a um, a company, a marketing company, actually, to help me do all this. And it ended up not going exactly as I planned. And a lot of things were not in the right positions and stuff to do everything. But I learned a lot. And no matter what, I'm going to tell you something. One of the hardest things to ever do is to finish something, no matter what, come hell or high water. And you got to finish. I was about two weeks out from this major race. I had investors in this and everything. Like it was the first time I ever did anything like this. And this is coming from a girl who's never even like done school, who doesn't like, who's just like, you know, for people to come and help me. And then I, I knew that like, I think we made it to like 500 participants maybe, you know, and it was like two days beforehand. Well, two weeks beforehand, I was known in my heart and it felt like my spirit was just crushed and I couldn't do anything because I had to keep a hundred other people going and excited and not even knowing for a split second that we were in trouble, that this was not going to like I had to carry that. So, you knew. Oh, like the handwriting oh, was on the wall. You, oh, was in yes. Trouble. But now I had to like because I mean, there was like. I mean, tens and tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars, but everything that I ever had worked for everything that I ever did, every cent I had, like everything for my son. And then, you know, different couple, just a few people who stepped out, you know, out of the boat for me. And then just such heart, you know, my heart was so broken because I felt like I left, I let them all down and I failed. And I don't know if anybody's ever had the feeling of failure before, but it sucks. You know, it is the worst. Not to mention when this was happening, I had left my job and I had, you know, my son, a 10 year old little boy, a nine year old little boy, no parents taking care of my elderly grandmother was very sick, finding every way. I was taking care of her and I just did this. So you, can you imagine what I was like? Well, oh my gosh. I just like unraveled everything that I finally got to in my life that I was like making like a dip, like that I was something that I wasn't just like this loser or this other, you know what I mean? Like how you, you, you think all these different things and, you know, yeah. you grow up thinking. And I was like, how could I have done this? And so after the event happened and it was, it was honestly, it was the most amazing event. It, it, it really was, you know, the race was just awesome and everybody had so much fun. And I, I helped build hand build like all of these obstacles, like throughout a 5k. So there was like 20 some obstacles and like, I literally would be building them until two o'clock in the morning. It was the first time I ever had a tick bite. I know that sounds weird, but I got to throw something in here. Yeah. Cause I feel like I'm yeah. like, Ugh. spice it up a little. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so after all this, I remember the, the day that it happened, the races were going to happen. I had these four wheelers cause we had to go through everything. And I kind of took one while everybody's doing the race. And because I was so just so brokenhearted. I took the four wheeler and went in the woods and I cried for about 45 minutes straight with nobody knowing. And I could barely pick myself up out of there to go in. Now I'm just trying to paint the picture of how depressed and how just broken I was literally. And I didn't want to have to like call my parents and say, hi, I'm coming back. You know, I gotta, I gotta move to Florida, but I had to do that because I was like, you know, living at Yalek. I had all these different things like that. I had a big overhead on me. And, and so I actually, my son was just so upset with me. I, I I don't know if I could paint a good enough picture of how bad it was at the time, but I ended up just drinking vodka for two weeks straight, not being able to get out of bed or anything. It was like just this, like this downhill spiral. So if anybody's ever out there thinking that they, you know, like are having some troubles getting a business started or doing their dreams or anything, it's perfectly normal. (laughs) It really is like, you know, and, but I didn't know this at the time that it was really leading me into the best things yet to come, 
you know, and all the learning experiences and the people that I met and everything, I knew so many things not to do, (laughs) you know, like it was just unbelievable. So after my two weeks of drinking, my, uh, a very dear friend of mine, who's an attorney calls me up and was like, you can't leave. The whole community needs you. You're not going anywhere. Help me to do this, you know? And so they asked me to help put on um, this big, like, seminar in Florida. And and I was offered a percentage, you know, like an opportunity to work for it. And then if I did, at least it would help me to get money for them. So I didn't, like, I was literally ready to lose my apartment. Mm-hmm. And I was lit. my grandmother was like in a walker and everything at the time. I'm like, how in the hell am I going to get my grandmother into the car with my kid? Drive us down to Florida. All I kept seeing was my grandmother and her walker trying to get across the beach. I literally had myself in such like a whole thing with it, but it helped me, I, you know, it pushed me further. And so I was like, if I don't do this job, you know, if I don't take this opportunity, I might as well just like, I don't even know what, just disappear, you know, just go poof, you know, and disappear. Yeah. Cause I was just, and instead I took the opportunity and I gave it my whole heart. Cause I told you, I do everything with my whole heart. And so I don't even, I don't care what it, even if it's washing dishes, I make sure the dishes are absolutely washed to the best ability, to best, my best ability, you know, like, and so I ended up doing what he asked. I, I doubled the conference of what they've ever had before. And I, t- I literally was working night and day trying to, t- you know, call these attorneys up cause it was a legal marketing, trying to call attorneys up all over the United States, trying to get them to talk to me. Mind you that the only law that I had ever come into contact with was not the good kind, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so you could just imagine me trying to like say this stuff. I had no idea. But when you're pushed into, when you're in a dis- de- desperate situation, you do, you do tons of things that you never thought you would do. And that's what I call being outside your comfort zone. That's the only place where the good stuff happens. Because if I didn't go out into that scary place, I mean, literally talking to attorneys and you know how people think of attorneys and doctors and everything, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, yeah, it's almost like intimidating, especially for me. Yeah. (laughs) So I was like, oh, if I I was going to back up a little bit with um, Candy's Place while at Candy's Place, while I was running the organization and stuff, I decided at the time to take classes at the University of Phoenix. I didn't graduate or anything, but I did take classes because I wanted more help on my coding and the design and everything. So I did that full time as well for like a year and a half, two years almost. And but then I I, I was getting enough from you know, like what I was doing that I knew that I had enough. And then that was when I decided to take the thing. So I do have some in there and I did, I want you to know how much I was working that I, you know, like I was always dedicated to doing whatever I had to do. And so at this, so then I was like, okay, what am I going to do? So I used the skills that I had marketing, not only a nonprofit <laughs> that I was always, cause I was always at nonprofit that I actually utilize it and learned everything that was wrong to do because of my mud run. It was called the R3 ops mud run that I was like, I'm going to do this the right way and I'm going to help people. And if this is my opportunity to help people, I'm going to do this. So I literally, you know, did all this stuff, got, I don't know how many attorneys, like 40 some attorneys to show up at the W Hotel in Fort Lauderdale from across the United States. And then when I got there, my friend was like, you need to speak. He's like, I'm going to fly you down. I'm like, I can't afford this. And he's like, you need to speak there now. You need to tell all about the marketing. You need to talk about social media. You need to do that. And I'm like, I can't do this. And he's like, yes, you can. Yes, you can. And his whole family was like, yes, you can. You know? And so I did it. I'm like, what do I have to lose? absolutely nothing. So I did it. When I got done, you know, doing my presentation and doing them at the the conference, 
I had five different law firms want to hire me. Two different ones, two different marketing law firms wanted to relocate me immediately to go work for them. And I had another one that I had already gotten an appointment within two weeks to go meet with them. And after coming out of that, it was like the best feeling and I knew where I was supposed to be. But I didn't know it at any time before that. I had not, it wasn't even like a blimp on my radar to be doing anything with lawyers or legal or anything like this. But it's all about relationships, obviously. You know, they always say relationships are important and stuff. So if I didn't have the relationship that I did, I would never be at where I am right now. And I just think that coming into it like this, of how I did, it gives me a much greater um, advantage. I think more so of other people because I've been here before. Like I've been in different positions where people like where I had to start from scratch or I did, you know, and and I know what it takes to make it, you know, and I'm willing to work like that for other people too that give me a chance because I always say you're supposed to feed what's feeding you. You know, like if you go to the restaurant and they feed you, you have to pay the bill. Well, if somebody, you know, hires you and it's healthy, you're supposed to, you know, it's just this, it's always cyclic. And so I'm definitely off track right now, not knowing where I'm going. You're like just you're, looking you're, at you're me going, like. What you're going to say next is you started NX2. I did. And I actually started NX2 the moment that I left when I resigned. I started it then. But I was doing marketing and events and everything all together. And that's what, you know, so the legal part of it, I, two weeks later after doing this, I went down to that New Jersey attorney and I met with him for like maybe 45 minutes or so. And I walked out of there with a couple thousand dollars in a contract. And that, that is how really NX2 became NX2. So that was like the first like real client like. Of- yes. Like, yes, a real big client. One of the biggest, actually, probably the biggest in Jersey City and stuff, too. And years and years and years we were with them. That's awesome. Yeah. So that was a very long winded. It's all right. But this is where I was saying that we need to like cut stuff out because it was a nah, little this is bit all good it was a little bit like rocky there in the <laughs> beginning because i get tied up you know because i mean it's just and trying to fit everything in of where it was and how where i came from and all that kind of stuff is it's not it's easier to talk to other people and encourage them and different things than to talk about myself yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so where does the name nx2 come from My son's name is Nicholas and we've always been the Knicks. And so when we would always sign our, well, when I would always sign our name, it would be N times two. So Nick times two because we're the Knicks. So that's where it came from. And all this time I've been calling it ENX two. You know what? I do too sometimes. Oh my God. Look at (laughs) me. You know what? Lots of people do, honestly. Sometimes I actually catch myself going ENX two, you know, and I'm like, (laughs) wait, who's E? (laughs) Yeah. So the upside down E, because I learned this right before we started, the upside down E is silent. Silent. And go ahead. You finish the sentence of... Of, the, of it being in the dictionary, like yeah, how it's, I was just how like, it's pronounced anyway. If you, exactly. If you pronounce it, if you saw it. it if you saw the logo. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so earlier this year, I think it was, you were named top 25 women in, women in business from the Northeast PA Business Journal. Yeah. Right? Which, it was. Can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, congratulations on that, by the way. Thank you. Um, so like, what, what did that mean to you to, to get that? Oh, my gosh. Like... It's still, I think all of it takes me back anytime because I, it's just like, I know that there are so many other women and people who are so deserving of it. And then I think, you know, I just, I'm just going to be really grateful for it because at the end of the day, I do know how hard I work and to come from where I'm at to where I am right now is quite the achievement. And I'm very proud of myself and, you know, all my team who helped me to get there. And to be honest with you, a lot of it's all, it, most of it is all my team. You know, they're the, they're the ones who shine bright. I was just going to say like, 
how did you manage to build such a successful company in such a short amount of time? I, I know. And, you know, people say it's a short amount of time. And for me, it's like, OK, I'm going on this. This is seven years that I've been, you know, I'm going on eight here shortly. And I'm like, I feel like it's just taken me forever you know, cause you like listen to all these different ones, but Mayan is everybody's handpicked truly. And I want to make sure that I have the most, like the team that we're all in the same mindset with the same vision, you know, because sometimes people in, this is completely like understandable. Some people just want a job for the time being and some people, and I get that and I'm able to help some people in that way. But for the majority of the time, I'm looking for people who are staying, who want to do amazing things, who could deal with me and all my like <laughs> things that I want to do or where we're, where I see us going. And like, I, it just takes a very unique person to be like that. And my team is incredible. You know, they, they really are. And they're so talented. They're amazing. They're just great people, kind. They do anything for anybody else. They're like, they genuinely want our clients to succeed. Like we get excited, you know, like, and I've been around quite some time in business and I know that that's not the case, you know, like a lot of times, but it is for us. And I'm looking for those people to come alongside me, you know, that really want to make a difference. I'm always saying, I want to make a legacy, <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know? Yeah. So is there anything else you want to share more about your team? My team, every one of them is unique. Each one of them has talents that go beyond anything that I could truly explain to you, you know, and all of them are in different ways too, personalities and stuff where it's just, it's really awesome being in the position that I'm in because I love to help people bring out their qualities and their gifts and their talents because sometimes it's not like with myself, I didn't know for the longest time what I was really good at or what was really where my position was going to be. And sometimes I think that's one of my really good qualities is that I could look at people and talk with them and like just I, I see what they've got to offer that sometimes they can't see. You know what I think because I was been looking for my in myself so long <laughs> 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 yeah. for different qualities too that I see in everybody else that I never found in me. And so I like to get people like that, you know, where I am really weak at. I like to bring others in where there's the strength. Do you know what I oh, mean? Yeah, like makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. So that and each one of them, honestly, if you were able to meet my team. And just even talk with them a little bit or whatever, whether it be business or just personal, like they're, they're awesome. <laughs> they really are. And I'm blessed for all of them. That's you great. Know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. What would you say is your greatest accomplishment so far? My son. Why? Um, he's everything to me. Truly. He's the reason why I, like I'm, I've survived many things because of my son and he is just the most like amazing soul. He's like an old soul. I always say he's an old soul. Like I really think like half the time, honestly, like I'll ask him different things and he'll have the, like the best answers or the best, like the things of wisdom to come back, like that he speaks with is incredible, but he's my love, you know, like it's, it's always been just my son and me. And, um, the things that I see him do and the struggles that he's come as far as like with just with me and the things that we've gone through, but even like his everything, you know, just everything. And Nicholas, I always asked him like, because he would see me struggle and he'd see me, you know, work in the multiple jobs and, you know, like he saw everything, you know, he's my biggest supporter, truly. And he's always right there with me. He helped my father build the office for me in Dallas at Yellick Plaza. He just helped again with some of the stuff in the wilkes Bear office. He's very dedicated. You know, he keeps back, but he's very dedicated in many things. And he's always, even if it's just once a year when somebody asks him something and when he says, I'm proud of my mom, best feeling in the world, makes me even do even more for him, you know, but couple weeks ago, because he's a senior now, 
Can you believe it? Oh my God, I can't believe it. I know you probably wouldn't be able to believe it, but <laughs> he's like, honestly, like going from how I made it. <laughs> like, I just want to shout, I made it. He's a senior and I didn't like kill the two of us or anything. You know? <laughs> yeah. But the one thing I always said to him was, Nicholas, can you do me a favor and a kindness? And the only thing that I ask for you is to do your best in school. Like, study, do whatever you have to do. I want you to get the education. I want everything. I said, this is, you know, like, and I'm really, I, you know, did a difference of like, from when I grew up, we went and taught, it was more, you know, get a job, you know, get out of school, get a good job, pay bill, get an apartment, do whatever you had to do. And it was kind of like just all, whereas of course that I did it all backwards yeah. and half-assed. Yeah, and, and circles and oh, uphill, gotcha. downhill. Downhill, yeah. downhill, <laughs> downhill, downhill, <laughs> downhill, downhill. Now we're going uphill. Now we're going uphill. Yeah. And we're still going down here and there, but that's like the journey. You yeah. Know? But Nicholas, just two or three weeks ago, I was telling him about Stanford and through all this time, like a couple years ago, we started taking a trip at Christmas time because like I said, it's me and him. And we would do a road trip down the Pacific Coastal Highway, you know, from San Francisco all the way down. And we would just have like mom and son time, like just because we're, you know, we're always together. We're we have a really great relationship. And we stopped at Stanford. And, you know, we might have done a little bit of mischievous things and like we might have like got into the stadium when we weren't supposed to when nobody was there just so that I could get a picture of him and say, dream big, baby. You know, I know he's going to remember all these things, but I always told him he'd always be like, mom, it's Stanford. Like, it's like the number one, number two school, you know, like how. And I'm always like, well, you never know. Because that's who I am as his mother, you know, like, and that's who I am as a person. I'm always dreaming big. And, and so he literally put an application into Stanford and he got a call back from them on a Sunday night. And I just cried probably all night long. Really, I didn't feel, I didn't even like literally, I don't think I went to sleep that night and I could cry thinking about it right now. <laughs> from everything that I'd gone through and to think that even my son had worked so hard. I told him, I'm like, please, I'm like, if you could do anything, all I want you to do is just go to college. And if you can get some type of scholarship, that'd be great. If not, I, I got your back, you know, everything. And so for my boy to get a call from Stanford, it's like very, it's humbling, you know, to know how hard he worked and that he was like listening to me the whole time and to think from where I came from and the things that I've overcome and to do. And then for him to like, he's amazing. <laughs> like, he deserves a company named after him. Like he really does <laughs> yeah. just how good and kind his heart is and everything that he's been struggling with this senior year. He's like just so many different things. Like he's just I mean, everybody should meet Nicholas. <laughs> well, maybe we'll have him on the podcast. Jeez. Yeah, he's really good. And he's got that sense of humor that's like, but he's very quiet. I always say he's a man of few words, you know, but he he was a great leader for his football and his sports and, you know, everything that he does with all of his friends and everything. And he's just he's like one of those guys that have got a really good heart, like the the really good kind. Do you know what I mean? Where yeah. You, like the kind that you don't see really anymore that. Very rare. The old soul, as you said earlier. The old soul. He's definitely an old soul, for sure. You know, and I'm blessed. Yeah. From him. Like, and you know what? Nothing would be here. I wouldn't even be talking to you today if it weren't for my son. You know, and yeah. me pushing forward to him, like to be better for him, you know, and that's all I want. And I want to continue to be that. And like right now, I'm telling Nick, let's try and be like our best versions of ourselves, you know, the you know, and I'm constantly putting that into him and then seeing some of his essays and everything that he put into the, he's actually listening to me. You know, I could see some of his different things that I'm always talking about to make sure. Cause I said at the end, at, like I always say at the end of the day, the other stuff doesn't matter. It's how you leave people feeling. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's, I could leave here and you could be like, oh my God, what was I thinking happening here? <laughs> <laughs> Cut this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh my gosh, Kidding, we're course. just going to be like, ah, oh. but you know what I mean? Like the good substance that you talk about and like the one, the, the, just the stuff that is real meaningful that later on in your life that you're going to think back and be like, oh, this is why, this is why I went through this shit.
Yeah. You know, or whatever it may be. Like, there's just so many moments like that that are constantly out there and in my everyday, honestly. And it's a good feeling. Again, I don't know where I just went off with this. Company. It's all good. So <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. It's okay. So who, uh, I mean, you know, besides your son, I mean, you know, he's probably, he's been an influence on your life. Is there yes. anyone that has been a mentor or one or two people? Well, my, of course, my parents have. They've been there for me. I could call them up. I mean, I don't know how many times I have reached out to my mom at three o'clock in the morning and she's right there. She's on it with me, you know, and she's always encouraging me and everything. And my father, like as soon as I need something like help with anything, he's like right there and I'll call him up with business advice because my father, too, by the time I was out of high school, he started his own company. You know, and I was able to watch him go through all that. So my mom and dad are my biggest ones besides Nicholas. Well, Nicholas is number one. He truly is. And then my parents. And then I have a lot of good, great friends who have been around me, different, even some clients that I work with. I develop relationships with them and I watch how they run their firms, you know, and I do it with like, I just listen to everything. I'm like a sponge. I always like to think, you know, when they say kids up until the age of like six or seven or something like that, you know, that they're like sponges. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still like that. <laughs> like I take in as much as I possibly can and learn. Like I love to learn. I love it. I love, love, love it. You know, and that's kind of amazing because in school I was like, it was really good in school, but I was always like, why do I need this stuff? You know? And then one of the things I always say is that it's the law of attraction. That's why, you know, like chemistry, what do you need chemistry? And mine was the law of attraction. Like I know how to do that and I utilize that and I try and teach and stuff. So, so there's a couple business friends and Jamie, another one is Jamie, Jamie Moss, her, she owns, um, a news pros and she does PR and stuff with all the top firms in the world. And we've been working together since I started. And, um, I met her by presenting and stuff. And it was just like, you know, something like that. She picked up and said, Hey, you've got something. And so, and she's been like my mentor, my big mentor in business. Okay. And, yeah. Where is she at? She is New York. Okay. So you heard just kind of kept in touch oh we do every yes yeah. every day we you know we yeah. work with some of the same clients and stuff all yeah. the time so nice really cool yeah well you know one thing we didn't even talk about is is your business really so like i know so you do you know marketing for law firms i mean do you have other clients too yes we're all industry types but our you know our niche is truly in the legal industry and i prefer employment lawyers like i just really do enjoy that and um that's my favorite, actually. We do all kinds and everything, but they're my favorite. And being able to learn a lot of different things, like we, um, I mean, we work on all industries. Like one of the one of the really nice ones was Norman Rockwell that we've done, which I'm sure you're familiar with. So we have a couple of those. We worked on um, on a, an actual legal case that we did um, was Robert De Niro. So we were the very first ones to get uh, his. It was actually like you know, conversation recorded or whatever, you know, and it was just like, we get to do so many different exciting things. We also were one of the big players in the Equifax and the Me Too movement. Um, so there's like so many different things. I, I love it. Like I, I really do. And being able to switch to all different injury, I get bored a lot. Like that's one of the things with me is I, I do, I'm like just one. And so me being able to say, oh, you know what? I'm interested in, you know, maybe hydraulics. I'm just saying. Yeah. I don't know where in God's name that <laughs> Hydraulics. I don't even know. I just thought it was like that. But I would be like, okay, well, maybe I could like look someone up and see and see, you know, if anybody needs a website or if anybody needs some help or graphic design or whatever. And then I have the ability to learn all this new stuff. Like we learn so much. We really do on a daily basis from being able to do what we do in marketing because you really have to learn everything. If you're honestly going to make a big difference in someone, you need to learn what they're doing and you kind of need to know their business inside and out so that you can market it the way that they would market it. So it's not only challenging and confusing, but it's also really rewarding 
to have knowledge of so many different areas and everything, you know, and we do everything from, you know, development to design. Um, we, we do everything all custom. So, and all of our uh, websites are custom. So then we're always like trying to do these new things where we're trying to up the ante and our scores and everything, you know, like just in the back ends of stuff. And we do social media and videos and animations. We, I love animations. I love seeing the videos and the animations the most. And content rating, SEO, PPC, all kind. You know, we just do everything with it. And it's fantastic because everybody on my staff has their own specialty. And it's great to see how they come together and then everybody learns it one another, you know. And yeah. they, they, they work so well together that everybody's teaching one another. And so everybody has a good understanding of what the other is doing. So that helps a lot more with it. Um, like I said, when I started, I, I actually had negative eight bucks. I never took a loan. I never had an investor. Everything was done just on, like, I still haven't. And, and today we're almost multi-million dollar company. And for that, to go from negative eight bucks and thinking that I'm going to be like living on a beach in the tent with my grandmother and my kid and the walker and the walker to be, you know, where you're at. Yes. Is I honestly, I know you said you don't like religion, but I got to say it's all God. It has to be all God. Cause like, really look at me. You know what I mean? Like there are miracles. <laughs> I'm one of them. You're a walking miracle. I really am from where I came, but I do have to say that my perseverance, my dedication, my, I have, I'm steadfast. I have, um, I could work anybody under, like I can, I could outwork anybody. Like, it's just, I love it. Like I love work. And so that part is a little bit difficult to ever outdo me with, you know, cause I'll still, no matter what's going to, whatever is needed, it'll be done on the deadline. You know, and I make sure I just I do love what I do. I love who I work with. I love who I do it for. You know, and I love who I do it with. I just I love it. I really am. I'm I'm blessed. I'm I will never stop being thankful for everything, you know, and I I like to give back and in different ways that most people don't know about, you know, and I and I really think that that's done quite a number for my company of the way that I have treated or reacted to others when they were in need or something. You know, I just believe everything comes back around. Definitely. You know, I'm all about I do a lot of the analogies about planting seeds and, you know, harvesting and everything. And I, I, I I'm a total believer in it. And I I believe that that's what happened with my company of how I got to where I am right now, because I know how to give, you know, and I know how to be thankful yeah. and humble. Yeah. Yeah. Because pride, that's really like, you know. <laughs> yeah. What advice would you give somebody who's either looking to start their own business or mm -hmm. just starting out? Like, what would you say? I would say that no matter what, when you think that you're done working, you're not. <laughs> No, <laughs> um, you really do have to have a lot of perseverance and dedication and you got, you got to really develop thick skin and you got to be willing to do what other people are not willing to do. Like, I remember these times it would be like one thirty in the morning and I'd be going in and kissing my son you know, like just giving him another kiss, checking on him at bed. And he'd be like, mom, why are you still up? And I'd be like, because if I didn't do it, somebody else is going to do it. And that means that that's a, a, maybe a dinner or a month over your head. Do you know what I mean? Like if I wasn't willing to do that, another one would have, and then that would have hurt my kid or, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that would have, and I'm like, you just got to have that drive. You know, you got to see what makes you tick and then utilize that for what you're going to do in business, you know, and then that helps. But you really do. You got to put the hard work in like it's not easy. And <laughs> if it's worth it, it's not going to be easy, you know, like and 
it's um it's a very lonely journey yeah truth be told because i'm working all the time and you can't just you can't be like normal people and go out and do all the things that they do or live the life that they're going to live like i will but it's not just yet you're you not, know yeah like right. you're still building it i'm building but i know that it's going to be worth i know it's worth it already right now because I was able for the last eight years of my son's life since he was 10, able to go to every single event that he had, every single baseball game and football game and golf, everything that he's ever done, every concert, like for chorus or whatever that he was in, I was able to because there was no way that I'd be able to do it if I had stayed working for just other companies, you know, because of taking off and doing what I had to do. And so... I, I really do believe if somebody's going to do it, they need to put their whole heart into it. Like you can't just go in a little bit. You can't just put like one foot in and then bring it back out and then say, oh, well, you know, everybody's going to the beach this weekend and it's 94 degrees out and you want to go so bad and your favorite concert is going to be playing near it. And all 12 of your friends are, you know, like you got to be the one that sacrifices all the time. Like, all day long, every day. It's how bad you want it. It's really, truly how bad you want it. And you have to want it worse than the other person. And that's like really my biggest thing is just to, you got to, you got to keep putting yourself in the most uncomfortable positions constantly. Cause if you're ever comfortable, you're not growing, you're not moving, you're not making a difference. You know, you're not, you just, you got to be making noise all the time. You got to, you have to be in order for this world with how much noise is going on right now with every single device, you know what I mean? Hooked up to you everywhere and everything you do and all on that, like you have to be able to stand out. Whatever your gift is, the world will make room for it. You just got to be willing to take that chance, you know, but the world will make room for your gift. Like, I totally believe that. And it did for me because I was determined. Yeah. I was determined. <laughs> like I said, come hot hell or high water. I was determined to make it. And I still am every day, you know. And now I get a little bit more time here and there because of my great team. But it's still just you're you're grinding. Like, sometimes I look at these things on Instagram and social media accounts and I see all these people where, you know, the hashtags of like all these different things. And I'm like, my God, they don't even know the first thing about, you know what I mean? Like some of them, because it's just so overdone that today, like some really, I think that a lot of times that people going into business and stuff, they see it as like, I think it's played up a little bit more these days because of like the influencers on social media and everything. I think they're wonderful, but the real it's hard, not the reality. hard heart. Yeah. It's just not, it's not posting a picture with 30 hashtags, you know, like it's just not that. And like me, I want to be on there myself. So, and I haven't been on in so long because I don't even know it's, I don't know the last time I watched TV. It's probably been about at least nine years, nine or 10 years. I mean, granted here and there once in a while, like I'll put something in the background, but it's usually music now because you know, like it's, I don't even, and once in a while I'll be able to on a weekend or something, I'll throw my son, I'll say, here's this or whatever, but it's really, you're giving a lot of shit up, you know? And to, for me to say, and I truly believe because most people go to are going to college and they get their background and they do whatever. Like me, it takes like what it maybe would take you an hour to learn. It takes me maybe three hours. It's a lot different. So my time, like I have to be able to do that. Plus do all the other things like, you know, because now I have the two offices and my son and all these employees and everything. I still have my own thing. You know, like there's just it's just a lot. So. Yeah. But it's surely it's worth it. It really is. You know? Yeah. I with my son being proud of me and everything like that. And to like, I mean, there's nothing better than that. Like, I mean, you know, that 
25 women in business was pretty pimp, but <laughs> <laughs> for sure. But no, like I, you know, it is, it's, it's, it's both an amazing, extraordinary, tiring, like overwhelming, exuberant, like it's yeah. so many different things rolled up in one and it's called, you know, entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so, you know, when you when you did that conference down in Florida and you talked about you had a, a couple opportunities mm-hmm. to like be relocated and or take another yes. job somewhere else. Yes. You ultimately decided to come back to NEPA. And my question is, why did you come back here and what is your favorite thing about NEPA? OK, so my favorite thing about NEPA would be. Well, The overall community is very close. I mean, I don't know if it's just like mine, but I just I really feel that there's something about this area that is just unique from all the places I've been at in the world. This place is so unique compared to most of it. And I have to attribute it to the people. I really do. You know, I wish it could be something else that I'm going to say, oh, you know, it's the, you know, like. The real writers or, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? The yeah. tubs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ricketts Glen. I mean, yeah. you got so much beauty around, but at the end of it all, it's the people. It really is. Is that what made you not, not relocate? Um, well. Part of it. Yeah. That and my son, because he was so upset with me and he's just so embedded into the Dallas school district for his whole life that he just, you know, like. And I know it was, the, I mean. The school is an amazing school for him. Look at what I just got done saying. Yeah. Obviously, it did him wonders, you know, but I knew that and I knew like that he was thriving there. Yeah. So how can how can our listeners connect with either you online or your, your business? <laughs> well, me, Nicole Farber, anywhere, pretty much anywhere. You could just kind of Google it and <laughs> there I am. <laughs> And the business is nx2marketing.com, nx2.com, any of them. There's nicolefarber.com. There's all kinds of different things on there. And of course, um, all the social media yeah. is the same thing too. Yeah. People are probably going to be like, no, we're good. <laughs> we've, <laughs> we heard had, enough. we've heard enough. We've today. had enough. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. Well, I think on that note, I think, uh, I think we'll, we'll call it a night here. Yeah. Uh, we'll have uh, NX2 podcast part two in yes. the future. Yes. <laughs> um, but uh, really, I, I want to thank you for for coming on today and really opening up and sharing your story. It's uh, Thank it's, you for having me. Yeah. It's hard for me to do because it's not like it doesn't come out easily, but I appreciate it. Yeah. You are a great host. Well, thank you. So yeah. <laughs> on the Stacks podcast, Nicole Farber, NX2 Marketing. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> If you'd like to learn more about the On The Stacks podcast, be sure to search the hashtag On The Stacks on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe and leave a review. We'll catch you next time on The Stacks.